Hey, what's going on, Rattlers? So I'm in the Bay Area of California right now at a place that I have wanted to come and see for years. I'm at East Bay Vivarium, and we're about to get a tour of this amazing reptile shop with the owner, Owen, but East Bay Vivarium has the distinction of being the oldest reptile shop in North America under multiple owners. Twin Cities Reptiles, my hometown shop back in Minnesota, has the distinction of being the oldest continuously running reptile shop under its original owner. So guys, again, I am particularly excited about this video because I have wanted to come here for years and years and years, and now I'm taking you guys with me on an exclusive tour of East Bay Vivarium. I'm Dave Kaufman, and I am obsessed with reptiles. So come with me and join my reptile adventures. At Rainbow Mealworms, we grow all our insects 100% naturally so that you get the freshest, most lively feeders on the market. So for all your reptile food needs, place your order today at rainbowmealworms.net. All right, so this is Owen. Owen, you have been working here for years. Almost 42 years. 42 years. So, you know, I know that I, I've mentioned that my hometown reptile shop, Twin Cities Reptiles, mm -hmm. uh, owned by Bruce Dellis, is the longest running, you know, the longest continuously running reptile shop in right. the continent right. under the same owner. Right. This is the longest continuously running reptile shop under multiple owners. So kind of give us a little background of the history of this place. Store was started in East Oakland in 1970 by Ron Cobble. I came on board in 1979, just as the bottom of the heap, clean out the cages and sell the reptiles guy. Yeah. Uh, and after being here three or four years, I decided I liked it enough that I asked to manage the place. And then uh, in 88, I bought it. Been here ever since. So you went from poop scooper to owner in a matter of years. Yeah. This is actually a really enormous store. The on-floor footage is about 7,000 square feet. And then we have another three or 4,000 off the, the, the sales floor. So this is a huge shop. Yeah. So yeah. it's not big enough, but <laughs> right, right, <laughs> right. Can it, can a reptile shop actually be big enough? You know? Oh gosh, I don't know. So here are our uh, baby frogs. You know horned frogs and uh, pixies and uh, what else do we have? Some baby Cuban tree frogs. And so baby frogs, uh, aquatic turtles, uh, some of our bigger caged animals. We've got radiated tortoises here, star tortoises here, uh, roughneck monitor, mangrove monitor, more frogs. And above all the frogs coming this way, we have chameleons and other arboreals. Spanish rib newt albinos that we're breeding. This is our spider rack. All our slings are in little cages within the cage there. Uh, and everything else is tarantulas, millipedes, centipedes, scorpions. So guys, East Bay Vivarium doesn't just do reptiles. They have a huge selection of tarantulas here, and I'm gonna film that video for my other channel, Dave Kaufman's Animal Adventures. That link is in the description below. That video is already up, so pop on over to my other channel to check out East Bay Vivarium's tarantulas. This is a very big uh, white throat. She is my former show animal. Her name is Elma. Wow, can we open this at all? Sure. Yeah. She's a sweetheart, and unlike me, she got to retire. So she just <laughs> lives here in a life of luxury, taking her beauty baths. Oh my God, but she's she, enormous. She and I worked together for many, many years. You've got some shed on your face, don't you, honey? Now, how old is she? She's gotta be 15 years old. 15. Point. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. She is just a honey. Yeah. I have, um, when I do my traveling reptile show, I have everything in 
big coolers. Right. And uh, when I do multiple shows on a Saturday, I'll take a, a lunch break and go find a restaurant. I always try to choose a restaurant from which I can observe the car. One day I stopped in a strip mall and was eating in a front window of a Chinese restaurant. My car was parked right outside. People going back and forth to the supermarket. She broke out, climbed into the driver's seat, put one hand on each side of the wheel and was just... <laughs> I, spent, I spent a half an hour eating my lunch in just hysterics watching people do double takes and like just completely shocked out of it. Oh, of all the things that I should have been there to film. <laughs> oh, all right. Good to meet you, girl. All right, and then we've got a big Argus up here. Yeah. She's a chumpster as well. Yeah, we do love the monitors. Yeah. Really do. Oh, wow, she's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, this is generally where we keep uh, hatchling bearded dragons, yeah. adult bearded dragons. Back here, we are very cooperative with um, Academy of Science in San Francisco. Sure. And we got a call from them one day that they needed to make room in their shop, their gift shop. And Lennon Drop was their amb ambassador in the gift shop. And if we'd come pick her up and take the cage, we could have her. So we couldn't turn that deal down. Right. So Lemon Drop lives here now. We keep cages like this around to show people what you can do. Absolutely. Uh, this is. Hang on a second. I just have to stop and pet the puppy. There you go. There you go. All right. On with the tour. This is Naya. She's uh, one of our water monitors. She's our best layer. She lays, lays eggs like nobody's business. Really? Yeah. That's great. So, uh, White-lipped python. Now this is an enormous white-lipped python. Yeah. I'm probably the biggest I've ever seen. What? Uh, what's her story? Uh, we're breeding her. She's full of eggs. So we're hopeful on that. She's grabbing right now? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So I see a bunch of ball pythons down here and a uh, wild yeah. Cusco over there. Yeah. Yeah. Brian, what you got there? A uh, beautiful Suriname. Looking absolutely fantastic, gorgeous, great temperament. My favorite, Dumerils. Do, you got to love the Dumerils. You know, so Owen, you know, I'm sure you will remember this as I do that before the morphs in, bo in boas, mm -hmm. it was the localities mm -hmm. that everybody wanted. Yeah. And the Suriname boas were like the holy grail of boas back before all the morphs. So right. every time that I see a really good looking Suriname like that, you know, it just kind of takes me back to, you know, getting excited about, you know, boas. So I noticed the croc monitor over here. Mm -hmm. We love croc monitors. I think that they're, here's the thing about croc monitors. They're easily tameable. The only problem is, uh, you know, with something like a water monitor, if it bites you, ow, ow, right. ow. With a croc monitor, you're going to the hospital. That's right. So it's the, the consequences of a bite are so much worse. Yep. But they're not particularly hard to tame. Right. So, well, you know, talk to Tom Crutchfield about that very thing. Yeah. Yeah. So this is John. He's one of the co-owners here. What is the story with rattlesnakes in California? So uh, any native species uh, we cannot sell unless it's an albino. So we have those out there. They're not for sale, but uh, per se we couldn't even have them on display if they weren't albinos. Uh, and no rattlesnake that's not native to the state is allowed. So um, the only albino that is currently readily available are the, uh, the western diamondbacks. The so the easterns and the copperheads and all those things that uh, are so wonderful we, we don't get to play with. So if you are a California resident, you cannot own a non-native reptile and you cannot own a native rattlesnake. I said reptile, but I meant rattlesnake. I'm going to say, actually, you're not allowed to, to own a non-native rattlesnake. Now, you can own non-native reptiles, but rattlesnakes that are non-native California are not legal. Are not legal. Gotcha. All right, so this is the female uh, albino atrox here. And they only do well when you keep them on purple gravel. Yep. They will not eat if you don't keep them right. on gravel. Look at how really awesome that shot is. It is so much better than Brian's shot on the other side over there. So how many reptiles do you think that you have under this one roof? Every year we do a inventory, but I, I, I got to say uh, at any given time, we're in the uh, probably 5,000 range. 5,000 reptiles under this roof. That is amazing. Now I see you have a big water monitor right here. Yeah, that's Boris. Hello, Boris. 
Uh, my brother-in-law is named Boris. Probably not for Boris Malenka. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good looking lizard. Now how old is he? I think he's about five, six years old. Oh, that's a good looking healthy guy. You got a sulcata up here. Yeah. Dusty Rhodes, the American dream. Dusty Rhodes, love it. And uh, three morphs of retic that all grew up together and all lived together. One of whom just laid a whole big clutch of eggs. Nice. Yeah, I love how you have the vertical uh, enclosure for your retics. I you talked know, about to this. My, to my amazement, these are big. I mean, they're not big by retic standards, but they're big. I see them up relaxing in the stay all the time. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, when I was in Thailand and I did the reticulated python in the wild video, I uh, talked about the importance of having a vertical cage as opposed to a short horizontal one. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, they are utilizing all of this, not actually right now because they're proving me wrong, but you know, <laughs> right yeah, now, I we, mean. We see them up here on these branches, beautifully <laughs> draped and they like it. They like it a lot. Fantastic. Yeah. All right, so we have kind of got a basic tour of the area of the shop that's open to the public, but every shop has a behind the scenes where there's some really good stuff that the public doesn't get to see. All right, so this is behind the scenes that is not visible <laughs> to the public. This and this is, is where all the goodies are. Yeah, well, we have a colony, breeding colony of uh, false waters, oh, love which them. I'm really fond of. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, all these bus trays are breeding animals. And then you can get a hint of, there's baby snake racks there. Look there's at that, all the way down there. Baby snake racks there. Baby snake racks here, and here, and here, and here. Uh, more breeders here, more breeders there. It just goes on and on. Look and on at and on. this. See, now this is the back room of a shop. This is what I this really is love the to action. see. Oh, look at that. Man, that guy glows in the dark. All right, what's the pied that I just saw? Ball python? Yep. You just gotta love pines. Black oh, yes. pines. We do those. Love the black pines. Oh. Not gone through their first shed yet. Look at that. So these are Brazilian rainbows. Yep. One of the few snakes that actually gets prettier as it gets older. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey. I got the exclusive behind the scenes. I'm, uh, I'm filming you filming behind the scenes behind I'm, the scenes. I'm filming you behind the scenes in the scenes. This is... How long can we make this go on for? I, I don't know. I'm I don't done. Know. Yeah. Incubator, 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 incubator. <laughs> yeah. So deep in the dark back closet here, you keep all the incubators. Yep. Tons and tons of incubators. All right. So how many eggs do you have cooking right now? I have not done a count. Uh, we'll just say a lot. We'll say a lot. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're going up. Watch your head at the top of the stairs. Yeah, I always have and to watch my head. head. I'm glad they put that there so I don't knock the sunglasses off my head. Breathe. <laughs> I got a nice shot up your butt, Dave. So here you have Rankin's dragons, and you just don't see a lot of Rankin's dragons in the world anymore. There they go. Oh yes. Gotcha. So there's some Ackies. Brian, do you remember finding these in the wild? Yes, they weren't that big. Nope, but they are awesome. Um, yeah, gotta watch, watch our head. head there. Yep, there we go, all right. Oh, look at this beauty. Whoa. So what is Godzilla's story here? He's a boarder. Oh, so he's, so, so you do boarding here? We do boarding, yeah. Wow, all right, so. You're boarding this amazing cyclura there. Well, with the California fires, there are actual entire collections we are boarding up oh, here. Oh, I suppose, point, yeah. Uh, that we're, we're doing just gratis because it's what we can do to help. Absolutely. Wow. That's awesome. All right, so more breeding bins in here. Yeah. Well, that's about it. A couple of aquatic tanks back there. Wow, fantastic. So, Owen, you have an amazing shop here. I've been wanting to come here for years and years and years, finally got down here. So what does the future hold for East Bay Vivarium? Ah, uh, more of the same. Yeah. You know, we, we've uh, been on a steady course. We think we have a kind of a unique um, business model. Yep. Uh, in that 
we feature more animals than just about any store you're going to see. Most stores, if you look, they have maybe 25% of the space devoted to animals and 75 to product. That's right. We go in a very different direction. We're much more animal focused. Uh, it's our business model and we, we're pretty unique in, in doing it that way. Well, and you've been here for 50 years, so you're doing something right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very check, in, cool. check in with me in another 42 years. <laughs> right. <laughs> so guys, I'm going to put the links to East Bay Vivarium. If you're ever in the Bay Area, you have got to check out this reptile shop. I'm also going to put all the links to my sponsors and Brian Cusco's channel in the description as well. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. And until the next reptile adventure, love the planet and rattle on.